Why does anxiety track so closely in people with autism? Have you been able to glean any insights into that? Um, yeah. and, 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 you know, autism is, is something that interests me immensely. What, what do we really understand about this disease? I, I think we know that it's, it's got a significant genetic component. It's not entirely clear what triggers it. Um, but you know, it's, and it's phenotype of course exists on a pretty extreme spectrum in terms of functionality, um, yeah. superpowers and super deficits. Uh, but w what do we know about autism and, and then specifically, why is it that anxiety tracks so closely in people with it? This autism is, is one of my main clinical focus areas. This is actually my clinic office here. I see, I see patients with, with autism uh, spectrum disorders here. I know that they are hard to treat. There's not a medication that, that treats autism. But as you say, a lot of them are very anxious and, and that I can help with. I can help them uh, with, with their anxiety, with medications uh, like uh, the benzodiazepine class of medications that we talked about. Those help the anxiety. They don't help the social problems per se, but they help with the anxiety. And, and why is that? Why are these, these patients with autism so, uh, why, did, why is anxiety such a comorbid symptom as we say? Why does it show up so much in autism? Well, the, the human social interaction world is very uh, complicated. It's very fraught with possibilities for misunderstanding, catastrophic errors of interpretation, embarrassment, uh, humiliation, confusion. We have a, a very social world that we've created and people who have difficulty with keeping up with the fast rate of, of social information and making sense of it, it's a very anxiety provoking situation. How, when you're talking to somebody, how do you know where to look, what to do, how do you, what part of them do you pay attention to? Do you look at their eyes? Do you look at their mouth? Do you look at their body movements? God forbid there's more than one person in a conversation with three people. How do you know who to look at? How do the people know what to say next? To someone on the autism spectrum, these are extremely challenging situations because it's, it's very hard to to keep up with this uh, high information rate of, of the social interaction. And this is something in the book, uh, Projections, that uh, we, we've talked about. There's a whole chapter, a story on autism and on, on how this might happen uh, neurobiologically, how this information overload might happen. We have patients who are as confused by social interaction and, and as overwhelmed by it as you can imagine, uh, you know, somebody not knowing the language, not knowing the customs of, of a culture and being uh, placed into it uh, while extremely consequential things involving them were happening in, in real time. And that's kind of the situation. And so you can understand anxiety being a big part of, of, of autism, just being unable to predict what happens. And so these are, these are uh, patients who we can help with their anxiety, still not yet with their autism. The genes that are linked to autism there are many. It's a very genetically uh, determined disease, not completely, but heavily genetically. The problem is, like so many of the psychiatric disorders, the genetic underpinnings, it's a patchwork. It's many different genes that all contribute a little bit in most cases. And so with all the beautiful genetics, which has given us a lot of insight, it hasn't led to treatments because there's not a single gene, single protein, single cell to intervene in yet. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously for all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in 
or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. 